I had no idea how to make glass in Blender when I first started, but thankfully it's actually very simple. Today we will learn not only how to create a glass shader, but also how to add some extra realism, some common glass variations, surface imperfections, and getting glass to work in Eevee. Before we do anything in Eevee though, we're going to first create the materials and cycles. So if you come up to this render properties menu here, which looks like a back of a camera, I'm going to make sure my render engine is set to cycles. Then I'm going to add something called a cube sphere to add my material too. So first to do that, I'll need to press shift A and then under mesh, I'm going to choose cube. A cube is good as well as there's a simple UV setting we can use in order to use a fingerprints image texture for our imperfections later. Though of course if you don't like using UVs and things like that you can use a procedural workflow instead using nodes. First of all I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode with my cube selected and then I'm going to press A to select all the faces, edges or vertices. Then I can press U which will open the unwrap menu and I'm just going to choose cube projection. Then I'm going to come into my left hand corner here and drag out this top here and I'm going to change this drop down from 3D viewport to UV editor. And now your UV should look something like this. If I press Control Z to undo, this is what it used to look like. I'll press Control Shift Z to redo. If you can imagine the square texture being put here, it will be put on each face evenly. And this will work great with a seamless texture. I'm going to come up to the top of this menu here, and I'm going to left click and then drag in order to get this menu to dominate the screen again. Now we need to actually turn our cube into a sphere like I mentioned. So to do that, I'm going to press Control and then 3. Now what that's done is it's added a subdivision surface modifier with three subdivision levels. And you can see that that if I come to my blue spanner here which is our modifier properties this is where all our modifiers are held and you can see here it's got a levels viewport free I also change my render to free and I want to make this editable geometry so I press tab just now you can see we still got our cube here you need to be in object mode for this so I'll tab back into object mode and then in my modifier properties menu here I'll left click this arrow here and choose apply now when I press tab to go into edit mode you can see we have this cube sphere one problem we still have though however is it's looking a little bit cubish still it's not like a perfect sphere so to fix that I'm going to press a and then under this mesh tab here, I'll just left click it. You can press transform and then choose two sphere. Then if you type in the number one, that's going to use that function to the full effect. So you can see how this looks a lot better now. I'll press tab to go back into object mode. And then I'm just going to right click and choose shade smooth. Now we've done that, this set up the shader workspace. I'll first come down to this red and black checker ball here. This is the material properties. And I'm also going to change my timeline here by clicking the clock and changing it to shader editor. These two menus here are linked because you'll notice if I press plus new in one of these, you can see it's added a material in both and that's handy because we can make small edits in this menu and bigger edits in the shader editor here. I'm going to create a soda lime glass first. This is a type of glass used commonly on windows and also certain objects such as a glass cup. So I'm going to left click where it says material and type in the word soda lime glass. Now before we make any edits to the material I'm going to left click this button here to go into viewport shading. Now we'll actually be able to see what changes we're making. There is a dedicated shader for glass in Blender but you can also just use the principal BSDF like I do as it can do glass just fine. I'm going to open up my transmission tab here and this is essentially the parameter which controls glassness if you like. So if I change this value to 1 it's going to make it completely glass. If I just change this to something like 0.1 you can see we've now got the glass we were looking for. However we can add some extra realism to our soda lime glass by changing the IOR which stands for index of refraction. Every material has its own index of refraction and changing this value can help add an extra level of realism. The IOR of soda lime glass is 1.511 so I'll just type that number in and I'll press enter. I have made a PDF guide which you can get in the top right hand corner and in the description below to help you get IOR for different materials you're making in Blender. Next up though we're going to create our crown glass which is a fancier glass which you will sometimes see used on certain objects around the house such as a fancy table or something like that. I'll press shift E with my sphere selected and then I'm just going to press G and X to move it along this red line here. Then in order to duplicate our material because most of our settings are the same I can just left click this new material button here and that's just going to duplicate our material. I'll left click this and then I'm going to type in crown glass and for our base going to give it a little bit of green like that. Then it has a different IOR so I'm going to change it to 1.520 which is crown glasses IOR. Now I want to add some surface imperfections such as fingerprints for example in order to add some extra realism to our glass. This will look especially good once we actually go into the render preview as right now we're just in the material preview and things won't look quite as good as they will in the final render. So I'm going to press shift A and then under texture I'm just going to choose image texture. Then I'm just going to press this open button and on my computer here I just have a, a folder where I've downloaded this fingerprints text from CG Bootcase. It's completely free and I believe it's CCO as well which means you can use it in your projects but make sure to look into the copyright yourself to make sure you have a good understanding of the attribution of this copyright. I'm just going to left click my fingerprints texture and press open image and now we have our fingerprints texture. I'll then press shift A and under input I'm going to choose texture coordinate. This is a node which allows us to tell our texture how to place the texture on the object. If you're using a procedural workflow instead using a noise texture for example for imperfections you 
would use the texture coordinate with the object coordinates. But since we're using an image texture here, we're going to use the UV coordinates. If you want to learn how to create some procedural reflections without having to use any textures, for example, if you don't like using UVs, then you can check out my recent video on reflections in Blender, where I cover how to do this in that video, as well as giving you a good understanding of what exactly reflections are and how they work. For now though, I'm just going to plug my UV into the vector of this image, and I'm also going to change my color space here from sRGB to non-color, as this is a black and white image. I plug my color into the surface. You can see this is the kind of image we've got here, and it adds a bunch of fingerprints to our material. I'll then plug this color into the roughness, and then the BSDF back into the surface. We've got some fingerprints appearing on our object. If you want to know how these image textures actually affect roughness, that reflection video I mentioned earlier will also help you understand that. For now, I'm going to press Shift A, and then under Converter, I'm going to choose Color Ramp. Then I can just plug that in between here, as right now I think the fingerprints are a little bit too strong. I'm going to leave the black, which represents the most reflective parts. I'll left click that notch, and then I'm going to left click the color here, and I'm just going to turn down maybe something around there we'll do for now. And if we want to copy this to our crown glass, it's very simple to do. All I need to do is left click and drag, and I can box select all of these nodes. I can right click and choose copy. You can also press control C, but I sometimes have issue with that hotkey, so I just copy it manually at the moment. Then I'm going to left click my crown glass, press control V to paste, and then I can plug the color into the roughness. Now let's see how our materials are looking like in cycles. If I left click this button here, we can go into render preview. But right now we have nothing in our scene, or for you, you might have a little bit of light and a gray background. To fix this issue, I'm going to add an HDRI, which is some quick instant realistic lighting. I'm going to left click this world properties button here, and here you can just press plus new if you don't of, uh, something in here already. Otherwise, you can just skip this step. Then, where it says color, I'm going to left click this yellow dot, and I'm going to change it to environment texture. This will allow us to use a special texture called an HDRI to get this realistic world lighting I was telling you about. To start off, the whole scene will be purple because there's no texture, and to fix that, all I need to do is press open. Then, in my downloads folder, I'm just going to choose one of the HDRIs I downloaded. I like to use this Kaylee interior. Of course, this is also a free resource which you can get from a site called Polyhaven, which I like to use. I'll left click this HDRI, and I'm going to press open image. And now you can see our glass in our scene. Of course, it'll look a lot better in our final render, as we can use a much higher sample count there. If I left click my camera button here, and change to Eevee, you can see our glass looks okay, but if I press Shift A, and under mesh, I'll add a cube for example, and press G and Y to move it back, you can see I can't actually see my cube through my glass. And to fix that, we need to enable a few settings for Eevee compatibility. First, I'll choose my soda lime glass, and in my render properties here, I'm going to turn on screen space reflections. And then, I'll turn off half res trick and turn on refraction. This will enable glass to work for all materials in the scene, but we need to enable it at a material level as well. To do that, you can just come down to your material properties with your object selected. Under the settings panel here at the bottom, you can turn on ray trace refraction. And you can see now, if I left click my cube and press G and X, you can see we're now getting reflections from the cube. Of course, these won't be superb as EV is very limited for things such as glass, but it's much better than what we had before. Now, I'm going to do the same thing for my crown glass as well. Since we've already enabled it in render properties, we don't need to change that but we do need to enable it at a material level. So left click my red and black checkered ball, scroll down to the bottom, and in settings, I'll turn on ray trace refraction. Now when I press G and X with my cube selected, you can see the cube is now showing through our crown glass as well. Now we've covered how to make glass. If you want to create this realistic bronze material, you can check out this video here. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.